working on external fixator till the beginning of 2000. And I, I had an international patent on a type of external fixator that I sold on the 2016 on the Mikai. Since then, I have no longer any relationship with the Mikai. Actually, the external fixator that we can find on the market are several. And all these external fixators, um, I just put it here, some examples, has some differences. Differences in shape, in color if you want, in the position of the fishes, especially on the omeral side, which can be distal or can be proximal just to avoid the risk of injury of the radial nerve at the elbow and also on the shape of the joint of the sternal fixator. But all of these have a characteristic in common. They hold the elbow, uh, align at the center of rotation and allow flexion and extension of the elbow protecting the ligament. The ligament can be reconstructed or repaired. But staying at the center of rotation of the elbow is not easy because actually the center of rotation of the elbow is a place that has been the bath since the past hundred years, starting from the beginning of the 900th century with Fisher flying now to the end of the 19th century, the beginning of 2000 with Botland and Medley. But all of them found that the center of rotation elbow just sit on the axis that goes from the epicondyl to epitrochlea. Although you have some movement of this axis of rotation in maximum extension and maximum flexion, and you also have a, a screw movement, so called the screw displacement, so the elbow migrates a little bit uh, externally and medially during flexion and extension. But apart from this, we can say that it sits on this axis, epicondylo epitrochlear axis. And all these fix or external fixator need a provisional epicondylo epitrochlear road on which you construct the external fixator. And that's the major limit of the external fixator because the road prevents you to put the anchors, uh, the position of the road prevents you to put a plate or a plate will not allow you to put the provisional road. So that's, this step is something difficult. Let's go to the indication of the standard fixation. Wide range of indication. We go from simple dislocation of the elbow to fracture dislocation. We then pass to uh, cases in which you have to reconstruct or reattach ligaments to an arthritis or capsule ligament reconstruction, till going to the poor osteosynthesis cases, which are very rare for me. But if we go to see the results, we have lots and lots of complications. In fact, if you just see this publication made by Ring in the 2014, he compared the result and the complication of a hinge external fixator to a simple cross pinning of the elbow. And the results were that from the point of view, score row are similar between the two techniques, but you have much more adverse event with the external fixation. And these events are due uh, actually for the device. In fact, the technique is very demanding. You need to put a provisional epitrochlear epitrop road at the beginning because otherwise it gets difficult or will not allow you for the plates or for the anchors. For putting the provisional epitrop epitrochlear road, you should do an arthrotomy and then multiple X-ray control because you must be very careful to put this road correctly. This obliges you to plane the sternal fixator at the beginning, so it is much more complex 
if you find the necessity of putting the external fixator at the end of the surgery, because actually sometimes it gets worse of the result of not putting the external fixator. You may have a harder impingement in the elbow, but if you have already put it and construct the external fixator, you have the harder impingement of the external fixator that will prevent you for putting anchors to reattach the ligament. So you need to, to do transosseal suture of the ligament. What we decided to do, we just watched some on literature and we found that on this work of Soberand in uh, 2016, he analyzed the, the result of the correct alignment of the external fixator using traditional techniques on a cadaver study. He just took six uh, cadaver elbows and he, he cut the ligament, he reduced the elbow and he put the external fixator on. Uh, then he took a CT control and he constructed with the CT control a 3D reconstruction and then he revealed the axis of rotation of the external fixator compared to the elbow and natural axis of rotation with a cinematic 3D software. And actually he found that there were a divergence angle of 6.7 degrees and an offset at the center of the trochlea of 4 millimeters. So this means that at the moment you take the road off, the provisional road, and you you have some forces on the road, and when you take the road off, the center of rotation of the external fixator moves a little bit, moves a little bit forward or backward, but actually it isolates a little bit, so it's not perfectly aligned as you were supposed to be. So what we decided to do, we, we took our um, new external fixator of the Mikai, which is out of centering and doesn't need the external fixator because the hinge found itself the center of rotation. And we control in the, the first six patients the result with the same technique used by Sobera. And so we take six patients, TC scan, 3D reconstruction, then representation with a, a, a soft kinematic software blend in this case. And what we found that also in our cases, the center rotation is not perfect, but it's almost similar to the one obtained by Subaran. You have a divergence angle of 3.2 compared to 6.7 and an offset of 6 mm compared to 4 mm. So it's not perfect, but it's similar to the one you obtain with traditional technique. And this is faster and easier. In conclusion, the elbow hinge external fixator has a wide range of indication. It's needful when you have to deal with tennis ligament, when you have to reattach the ligament or reconstruct the ligament, and when you face the cases of low compliant patient, psychiatric patient and not complaining patient. The results are good. If the, pos the positional external fixation is fine, the results are good. And it's fine, although you have some imperfect alignment, but small divergency or offset on the alignment just doesn't make a big difference. It's normal. But on the other side, the surgical technique is very demanding. You must be very careful because you can make quite a big problem. You can injure the nerves and you can not correctly reduce the elbow. You can force on the articular uh, surfaces. So, uh, unfortunately, at the moment, the surgical clinic is demanding, but anyway, you must have uh, with you on your side uh, the external fixator when you face complex cases. Because although you trust in a good reconstruction at the beginning, you may have the necessity of an external fixator at the end of the surgery.
This is simple, which I'm sure in fracture of the elbow, maybe not this simple, but it's not complicated. Has been threaded elsewhere with the reduction and screw fixation, but this was just the immediate post op in this location because of the problem of the ligament. So they decided to go for a pinning technique, but this after 45 days this was the result so it has been sent to us and we decided to take the hardware out just to reconstruct the ligament put an external fixator and this is the post-op control at six months thank you very much for your attention